Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Michael here. We're looking at Tin Can. It's a game I've had on my wish list for some time. I went and bit the bullet and got the game and I am loving it. So today we're just going to have a look at the basics of this game. It can be played in VR as well. You've barely managed to escape your exploding spaceship. Now in an old escape pod, you hurtle through space at the mercy of the cosmos. With no knowledge of the pod's complex systems, your life depends on a technical manual and your own wits. How long can you survive? There's multiple game modes and it's all about problem solving and managing your components. So here you've got rescue. Maintain your beacon online for rescuers to find you and unlock new components and systems to survive longer. You've got challenges, face your fears and use your wits to custom made challenges meant to drive you mad. Ranking is just basically longest survival time beat the community sandbox have a stroll in the pod and play with its systems the only thing that can kill you here is yourself but today we're going to be looking at the tutorial and the very basics of this game and then we'll probably follow up with a with a proper play so learn the fundamentals of the tin can before exploring the pod further there's four parts to this move and interact vital needs power management failures and diagnostics could you do me a favour? I was supposed to do the maintenance of one of our old Medusa skate pod, but I'm stuck in the engine room fixing our damn reactor. This is the main space station, and then this is the pod in there that we're going to be going into, and we end up living in that pod. <laughs> uh, what I love about this is the actual components, the problem solving, it's fantastic. So we're going to have a look now at the first part of the tutorial. Could you leave your cleaning trolley for a minute and uh, help me out? Just get inside the pod. You can't miss it, you're right next to it. So we're going to let the tutorial voice play as well. This part is a piece of junk, not worth any maintenance, but I don't make the rules. Anyway, I was supposed to reassemble the oxygen system. Could you do it for me? It's pretty straightforward. Could you locate the oxygen system and open it? Uh, you should see three drawers against the wall. It's the top one. Yep, this is the one. As you can see, it's empty. All the components are behind you on the workbench. Just Grab a couple so we can get started. When he says a couple, I'm going to do the whole thing. So, well, now all of these components can fail <laughs> at any point and you'll have to switch them out, sometimes between systems. Some of these components are, are universal. And so it's all about managing. Oh, come on. It's all about managing these components and monitoring them. Monitors? <laughs> There we go, pump, doing good. Uh, we've got these front bits here. These are like fuses, I guess, the warnings. And then you've got your data connector, which is gonna go there. And, oh, and the monitor. Jerry, uh, you should be done by now. Just turn the oxygen system on using the on off switch. Well done. Uh, now we just need to check if everything is working properly. Could you look at the monitor and switch to the error codes channel? Perfect. Um, now, as you can see, the oxygen bottle inside the system is empty. Could you swap it with the oxygen bottle located in the recycling station? So here, this is where the CO2 bottle and the oxygen bottle are recycled. So we're going to take this out because, as you can see, it's empty. Grab That's this the one. one. Uh, the oh, recycling well. station oh. converts carbon dioxide into oxygen. Pretty useful, eh? Anyway, just uh, replace the empty bottle with this full one and we'll be done. There we go. All right, we're done. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, you can go back to your cleaning trolley. Wait, damn it. Are you still there? I'm detecting a leak in the pod. Could you uh, get the leak feeler? So here's another one here. So we've got the filler here. Feeler, le you leak have feeler. To climb a bit. Uh, you can grab a handle with your free hand to get closer to the leak. Once you get closer to the leak, just uh, aim at it Oops. and use the leak feeler to close Sorry, it. Sorry, my bad. I always get confused doing this. So right and button, and then you go in, and then you press uh, the use button. There well we done. go. I'm not detecting any leak anymore. Uh, we're all good. Thanks for your help. Anyway, I gotta go. This damn reactor is driving me crazy. Now we've got vital needs. Can you hear me? Sorry to bother you again, but I'm stuck in the ship's engine room. 
and I still don't have time to take care of that damn Medusa escape pod. Wow. You're going to have to get inside the pod again. He does know I'm a cleaner, right? We're going to check to see if the life support systems of the pod are working properly. I'm going to need you to turn them on one by one so we can check their values on their monitor. First, let's make sure that we have what we need to breathe properly, alright? I need you to find the oxygen system and to turn it on. You can't miss it. It's the top drawer with oxygen system written on it. So, on Earth, at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is one bar, and the oxygen level is around 20%. That's our target. As you can see, we're all good here, and the value is green, but if the value turns red and drops below 16%, you'll find yourself in hypoxia. It's not a good thing, as you can imagine. The opposite is also true. Too much oxygen can also be deadly, so always keep an eye on these values. So, the pump inside the oxygen system diffuses the oxygen contained inside an O2 bottle into the air. Below the oxygen system, you'll find the carbon dioxide scrubber used to get rid of the excess of CO2. I need you to turn it on as well. Good. You have to be aware that too much CO2 in the air is just as deadly as not having enough oxygen. Your body breathes O2 in and exhales CO2. The value should never rise above 6% at one bar. Now let's check the pressure generator uh, just below the CO2 scrubber. Turn it on. So this system is here to maintain the atmospheric pressure at one bar by releasing or capturing nitrogen in the air. The pod cannot sustain more than 1.7 bar, so be careful with too high pressures. It's also important to remember that the required oxygen levels and the lethal levels of CO2 vary depending on pressure. We're good for the atmospheric systems. Now let's turn the temperature system on. It must be getting quite cold in here. You know, space is cold, but there is nothing there to efficiently transfer heat. I mean, sure, without heating you'll eventually freeze to death, but in a pod like this one, equipped with a hot atomic pile, you need some way to stay cool if you don't want to be cooked. The temperature system uses power to produce heat and liquid nitrogen to cool the air. I can tell you that cooling the air is very important when you're running the atomic pile at full power. Alright, you should be feeling warmer now. I am. Uh, everything looks to be in order. Thanks for your help. You can go back to your work. And I have my own work to do to make sure our ship's reactor doesn't cook us all in the next few hours. See ya. Power management. Uh, it's me again. I need your help with the pod. I am a cleaner. You know, I'm not an electrician, so... So I was installing a new atomic pile inside the pod and guess what? I had to go back to the engine room of our ship because the reactor is acting up again. So could you get inside the pod? So I'm going to cut the external power connection so we can test the new atomic pile. It's going to get dark in here, but don't worry, we'll bring life back to that old tin can. All right, I need you to find the main reactor. It's located on the ceiling above the gravity generator. I need you to open it. Yep, you got it. Uh, now just turn it on, all right? Perfect. You shouldn't see much of a difference right away. It takes a moment for the atomic pile to warm up. The hotter it gets, the more power it produces. Do you see the ammeter below the generator? Yep. So the red needle indicates the energy produced by the pile, and the blue one indicates how much energy the active systems need to function. As you can see, it's above the red one. It means that the pile is currently not warm enough to produce all the required energy. Now, I'm going to remotely lock the pile temperature for some tests, but in normal circumstances, it's the processor plugged into the main generator that controls this temperature to provide the required amount of power. I guess I don't need to tell you what happens when it breaks down, huh? So there's a lot to learn initially. You do have this, which is your best friend, which is an amazing reference guide, and I highly recommend you read through it. There's, you know, only 24, no, 35 pages. But everything you need is in this. Anyway. Could you turn the main computer on so I can look at the system status? Damn it, I've locked the temperature too soon. And there isn't enough power. Could you 
Could you turn other systems off so we can save enough power to turn the main computer back on? Just keep an eye on the needles. You need to align them. Oh, that's pretty close, isn't it? We need to shut down some other systems. That's so close. Uh, okay, we're going to have to shut these down. There we go. Looks like it might be working. And then we'll put this back on. Perfect. I'm getting the data. Thank you. Oh. If you ever have to operate an atomic pile, keep in mind that it's slow, capricious, and that it can get very, very hot. So uh, always make sure to protect your systems with a fuse and a transformer in case of overload. Anyway, it seems the new atomic pile is working fine. So that's it for me, and you can get back to your cleaning. Failures and diagnostics. I know, I know, this is the last time, I swear. Just get back inside the pod. There is a problem with the oxygen system you reassembled earlier. I'm not saying it's your fault, but I need you to take a look at it for me. You know okay. I'm a cleaner, right? Thanks again, man. You have no idea how much work it is to keep this escape pod in working order. Honestly, I, I would rather die than have to escape in this thing, even after a bunch of repairs. Anyway, the oxygen system has a problem and I need you to check the error codes channel on its monitor. Perfect. You should have the error list in front of you. The main computer usually translates the codes, but I had to take it off. So unfortunately, I can't really help you from here. So I'll let you browse the manual That's to fine. find what the error codes mean. I'll let you grab the defective component once you figure out which one it is. Oh, and uh, do not forget to turn the system off before touching anything, all right? So what we've got to do is check the error code. It's OBEA. So we've got to go first of all, what is it? It's the oxygen generator, so page nine. And then the error codes will be at the back. He says, there we go, error codes. There it is, middle. Bad power trans, power transformer is damaged, All right? We can fix that. Where is it? Oh wait, we've got to turn it off first. Uh so unfortunately, I can't really help you from here. So yeah, I had a feeling this transformer wasn't working properly. I need you to use the repair station to fix it. Put the transformer inside it and it will tell you how many spare parts are needed for repairs. To pick this up, we'll pop it in. Do you see the numbers on the repair station? Yeah. So the top screen indicates how many spare parts are required to fix the components and the bottom one, how many you currently have. Ha. So we don't have enough. All right, so let's dismantle a component we don't need. This one. I think I left a monitor on the workbench. Yes, you did. Uh, put it inside the repair station, close the door, and press the dismantle button. And we're gonna hit dismantle. Well done. You know how to spare parts to fix the transformer. You can throw the monitor away. It's dead now anyway. Okay. Just put the transformer inside the repair station and press repair. Go away. We don't want you anymore. Where's the... Uh, there it is. There we go. So we've got 40 points and it needs 11. So we're going to repair it. So I guess we always need some uh, credit in the parts number. You can now put the transformer back inside the oxygen system. Uh, make sure it's turned off first. All right. Uh, once you're done, you can turn it back on. Okay. Well done. You're really doing me a favor, so thank you. Uh, you can get back to your cleaning trolley, and I'm going to get back to work because this damn reactor is driving me mad. Why is that offline? Oh. Okay, that's why. Jerry, the ship's cooling system just failed. Warning. The reactor, it's Whoa. going to blow. You need to grab as many components as you can in the storage rooms and evacuate right now. No matter so, what you do, do not leave aboard that damn... Evacuate to the nearest so you would have to collect parts from here before your game 
and uh, throw them into the pod. <laughs> but because that was a tutorial, it, it doesn't matter. So thank you very much for watching. We will cover this game again in more detail. I'll do a proper playthrough or two. Love it. Go pick it up for yourself or wishlist it. I think it's super cheap on Steam right now. Super cheap on Steam. Go check it out. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, so long and goodbye.